All right. Uh, welcome to the class of engineering metallurgy, ME3215, uh, BC engineering mechanical, uh, in mechanical engineering introductory class. And I'm Dr. Mohd Arif Jaman as a professor department of mechanical engineering. And today we are going to start uh, with the introduction of the course. Uh, first of all, we'll talk about the course contents uh, for this engineering metallurgy. For metallurgy. Um, actually, I will uh, conduct the classes based on the uh, final exam uh, part A, uh, which contains metals and alloys, crystal structure of the metals and alloys, and heat treatment. And uh, we might also include powder metallurgy at the end. Uh, it depends on if the other teacher can complete all, uh, all other four topics. For example, uh, he will teach production properties and uses of materials, ferrous, non ferrous and the production methods of various ferrous and non-ferrous materials and metallurgical aspects of metal joining and powder metallurgy. I think uh, I'll also I'll also conduct the powder metallurgy. It depends on the other teacher. If he can finish uh, course material on time, then I'll, uh, I don't have to do that. Uh, so for the course content, metals, alloys, crystal structure of the metals and alloys are key treatment. These are the major topics we will study. And if we go to the subtopics, like for metals and alloys, we, we are going to study uh, the properties of metals. Uh, there are various types of properties like um, mechanical, chemical, electrical, uh, metallurgical, uh, technological. So there are various types of uh, cat categories for the uh, properties of uh, metals or alloys. So in that case, we will study uh, briefly, actually not, uh, not whole detail, because um, in your, if you look at your um, course catalog, information catalog of mechanical engineering, it has like, for example, a few properties like malleability, ductility, hardness, toughness, fatigue resistance, etc. And also we are going to study the temperature measurement techniques for uh, metallurgical engineers. As a metallurgical engineers, it is important to uh, measure the temperature at various stages of manufacturing as well as uh, production, uh, various stages of production. <clears throat> and thirdly, we are going to study the metallography. The metallography is the study of uh, microstructure of the met metal or alloys. In that case, we're going to study how this metallography works and how to do the metallography and what are the informations we can obtain from metal, uh, metallography or crystal structure of the material. Yeah, these are the, uh, the methods actually we're going to discuss uh, in this course. And finally, the destructive and non-destructive tests for metals and alloys. Uh, destructive tests, uh, you already know that uh, um, it involves the breaking of the specimen and that specimen cannot be used further uh, for uh, for the intended uh, in, in the intended service. And for the non-destructive tests, you can do the test. You can uh, determine the properties or <coughs> any other thing. Then uh, you can again, if it is okay, uh, it doesn't have any uh, significant defect. Then you can use that in your uh, in, in the intended service. Okay? So there are several techniques for destructive and non-destructive tests, and we're going to study all, almost all of them um, in detail. Okay. And the second second part is the crystal structure of metals and alloys. Uh, in this part, we're going to study the types of crystal lattice. You already know about this actually. Uh, during your uh, higher secondary education, you have already learned in physics. Uh, that uh, how the atoms are organized inside the material. And uh, to be more specific uh, for the crystal lattice, you have studied uh, like unit cells, um, like simple cubic, uh, body center cubic, face center cubic, something like that. These are the uh, very popular or um, mostly used uh, crystal lattice structure for unit cells uh, that we use uh, in the case of metals or alloys and how this uh, works. We are going to study all of this in, in the type of crystal lattices. 
And in the second part, uh, solidification of the metals. In this case, we're going to study when a metal is molten uh, in the liquid state and how this metal solidifies the internal structure, how the internal structure of a metal or alloy forms, we're going to study that. And it solely depends on the uh, temperature. With the, with the decrease of temperature or removal of temperature, or the removal of uh, uh, kinetic energy from the uh, from the metal uh, atoms, uh, the solidification actually occurs. And that solidification technique, we're going to study with the, uh, various curves uh, so that how the solidification works, we need to uh, study it because uh, to develop new metal or study, uh, use a metal, you need to know how, uh, how these metals get solidified. And if the solidification the temperature and solidification uh, cooling rate. These are the uh, affecting parameters that affects the final property of the metals. So we need to study that. And uh, thirdly, equilibrium diagram of the alloys. Uh, uh, I think you already know what is alloy, uh, but uh, alloy is, uh, there will be a parent metal and uh, some other metals will be uh, metals or non-metals. Uh, when we incorporate them together, uh, they form uh, metallic bonding or ionic bonding that are, there are some uh, other kind of bondings too. Uh, this bonding, due to this bonding, they form, uh, we call, call them alloys. And these alloys, uh, when forms, for example, if you use iron and carbon to make uh, steel, uh, in that case, uh, if you vary the percentage of carbon, uh, how the metals uh, melting point temperature changes, okay? Uh, the, when you use uh, a different material in a matrix of a metal, then uh, the metal properties changes. And that changes how uh, occurs with that, uh, uh, in, in the melting point temperature too. And the uh, melting point temperature that uh, changes with the uh, addition of uh, a metal or non-metallic element into the alloy, uh, we're going to study that. So how this uh, proper, how the properties also affects uh, due to that uh, addition of uh, metals and uh, non-metals in the metal matrix uh, to produce alloy and uh, the structure uh, the formation of the structure and the, how the properties of that metals and alloys are going to change uh, related to the equilibrium diagram we're going to study that so uh, and these two parts the equilibrium diagram of the alloy and the structure and properties of metals metals and alloys related to equilibrium. This two part will be the most interesting part of this uh, course uh, in my part actually. And lastly, uh, in the crystal structure, we're going to study iron iron carb carbide diagram, uh, which is basically uh, uh, the iron and uh, the alloys of iron and carbon, but we're going to study up to the iron iron carbide. That means iron uh, Fe3C, that is the iron carbide, which is a compound and we're going to study that diagram in detail because in the steel industries, uh, this diagram has uh, quite significance uh, because uh, if you want to do heat treatment, you need to know this diagram. If you want to produce some kind of steel, special purpose steel, then you need to know this diagram, okay? So this diagram is very important uh, as a mechanical engineer. And lastly, the heat treatment. A heat treatment of steel. How well, we're going to study only steel uh, with the various proportion of carbon in the in, in the iron. Uh, we're going to study the heat treatment of that. Various types of heat treatment like uh, hardening, annealing, um, uh, uh, and then uh, tempering. Okay. And this heat treatment also involves uh, a TTT diagram. Uh, the explanation of TTT is time, temperature, and uh, transformation time temperature transformation diagram. So this diagram uh, gives a complete insight how heat, uh, heat treatment should be done. Uh, using this diagram, you actually can design a, uh, a, an alloy or, a, or metal, uh, sorry, not metal, an alloy uh, uh, before you are going to produce that. Uh, that means the theoretical complete insight can be found from this diagram, uh, the ha how your uh, material will be solidified, and how your alloy will, uh, will perform uh, in terms of strength or metallurgical properties, then you can get a complete insight about the uh, heat treatment of uh, steel or any other material. And finally, the surface hardening. Uh, 
the, how the hardening occurs in the surface. Sometimes we need the surfaces to be hard compared to the inside of the, mat uh, of the material. Then uh, you need to do uh, the surface hardening. There are various techniques of surface hardening uh, that we're going to study in this course. And for, uh, do you have any questions so far? No, sir. Um, okay, so what is metallurgy? So, so far we have studied, uh, we have uh, talked about uh, what are the topics you are going to study in this course. So you have got an uh, idea how the meta uh, what is metallurgy. Metallurgy is the study of metals or alloys uh, in terms of various, uh, to for the modification of various properties of the material or develop to, the, to develop various materials according to the requirement, uh, industrial requirement. And in the metallurgy, there are actually two types of metallurgy. Uh, first one is the process or extractive metallurgy. In this metallurgy, we study how a material is made. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, how uh, from the actually the materials are available in the uh, ores, right? So from the ores, uh, the material how to process to get the pure metals out of a mine. Okay. So these uh, these things are described uh, or uh, studied in the in the extractive metallurgy. And that means how we extract the metal from uh, from the mines. And the second part is the physical metallurgy. Uh, actually, this part I'm going to uh, um, uh, discuss in this uh, course, uh, which is the chemical composition of the metal, metals or alloys, uh, the how chemical uh, metal, materials properties are depend, depends on the chemical composition of the material. We're going to study that. And then mechanical treatment, how mechanical treatments affect the, um, materials uh, properties. For example, uh, in the manufacturing process, we have studied like uh, cold rolling or hot rolling method. In that case, we have also seen that uh, the how cold rolling affects the grain structure of the material. And that also uh, changes the material properties. Uh, so uh, this also discussed in the physical metallurgy section of the metallurgy. And the finally, thermal or heat treatment. That means uh, with the, um, uh, by treating the metals or alloys at different temperature ranges for different time, uh, you can uh, obtain various properties using a single metal. For example, if you use 5% uh, sorry, 0.5% carbon in in iron, uh, and that <laughs> steel is uh, usually called uh, plain carbon steel. And that plain carbon steel, if you heat it at 800 degrees Celsius temperature and then cool suddenly in the water or uh, salt bath, uh, then you will get a very brittle material that can break very easily. Okay, but if you do that at uh, heat that that same metal with 0.5 percent carbon, or that means the plain carbon steel. If you heat it at 800 degrees Celsius temperature for five minutes or uh, 30 minutes, and then you cool it very slowly, then you will get a very ductile material. That means that can, if you bend it, it can uh, can be made a, a roll can be made. Okay. So the material property is same metal, but it, uh, with the application of heat and uh, cooling rate, uh, different cool, for, because of the different cooling rate, you get uh, different material properties. So uh, if you want to, for a specific purpose, if you want to design the metal, or if you want to design an, an alloy, then you have to take care of these three properties, like the chemical composition, uh, mechanical treatment, and thermal and, or heat treatment. So this is all for today, actually. And for the reference books, uh, you can study in the, uh, the textbook that I'm going to follow is uh, Introduction to Physical Metallurgy by Sidney S. Avner. And also there will be some other materials from different places. And uh, another one which will be very important is properties for the properties of engineering materials, uh, R.A. Higgins. And the third one, the metals, materials, and metallurgy. You need to buy this book, actually. Uh, this book is very important. Uh, also, you need this book for your uh, laboratory, that means the laboratory session, sessions. Uh, for ME3216, you need this uh, materials and metallurgy, this book. And this book is also, also a good guide for metallurgical engineers. Uh, so I hope you will purchase this one and keep it in your 
uh, library. All right. Do you have any question? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, sir, it are kids are PDF could be available also, sir. I don't know about buying. Um, I, I, I have the copy of Introduction to Physical Metallurgy, Sydney Journal, but I don't have the other two, like metals and materials and metallurgy. I think you get that. Uh, I, I actually did not try to get that book. So I'll try and if I get it, then I'll, uh, I'll definitely send it to you. Thank you, sir. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Okay, so for the next class, we are going to study engineering materials. That means metal for the metal and alloys part. Uh, we are going to study various uh, mechanical properties or chemical properties, various properties of the material with different categories. Uh, the next class will be held on Monday. So I hope we will be present in there. Yes, I'll